So the jerk is the second movement of the second event in a weightlifting competition. The sport of weightlifting revolves around simply getting the bar from the floor to overhead. In the snatch, we do this in one motion. In the clean and jerk, it needs to be done in two. Once you're done with the clean, which gets the bar from the floor to your shoulder, you still need to get overhead. This is where the jerk comes into place. It follows the same guidelines as the snatch. The bar needs to be caught overhead with completely straight arms and in one motion. No bending of the elbows or finishing the extension by forcefully pushing the elbows into the lock position is allowed. There are several variations for the jerk, but in this video we'll cover the split jerk, which is the mostly used one. Keep in mind that all the mechanics that I'm gonna talk about will apply to every single type of jerk that you can do. The main difference between jerk variations is simply foot positioning. In the split jerk, the feet will of course split into a front and back position. Meanwhile, in the push jerk, power jerk, or the squat jerk, the feet remain more or less in the same position they would have when you're squatting. Now, to alleviate some confusion, the jerk requires the rebending of the knees and the catching of the weights overhead with completely straight arms. Otherwise, we're just talking about a press where the knees do not rebend after full extension and the arms are allowed to help in the full extension and the full lockout of the weights overhead. There can also be some confusion when it comes to the push jerk and the power jerk. The main difference between these two is that in the push jerk, the feet do not move. Meanwhile, in a power jerk, the feet will visibly leave the platform after full extension. This gets kind of convoluted because sometimes it's hard to tell whether their feet move or not, especially because the heels can come up in a push jerk, but this is also not the end of the world. Just know that in the power jerk, the feet will visibly leave the platform. So if you ever find any of these in your programs, just do your best to abide by the basic guidelines. There's probably a reason why those are your programs on those particular days, and you should always perform the movements as they are described in your program. Quick note before we get into the technique portion. As I stated previously, the jerk follows the clean in competition. So when you're training the jerk, make sure that you are keeping the same positions, both in your grip and in your stance, as you would after finishing your clean. Make sure those stay consistent throughout every single rep. And this shouldn't be too complicated. Maybe just take a few videos if you're really that unsure. But as a weightlifter, you should be pretty familiar with these positions. And I'm mainly talking to weightlifters here because there aren't really many reasons for athletes outside of the sport of weightlifting to really practice to jerk. You know, the amount of time that it takes to get really good at it or good enough for the loading that you can actually use in the movement to actually produce some meaningful adaptations, it's kind of not warranted or like, maybe can be even perceived as a waste of time for athletes outside of the sport of weightlifting. Now, if you just enjoy learning movements or if you have time in your training schedule to actually put it in, like do it. There are a lot of benefits that can come from the jerk in the realms of power development and power perceptions. So if you have the time, you have the mobility and you just enjoy learning movements, there's nothing wrong with putting it in the program or learning how to jerk, even if you're not a weightlifter. Just a quick side note. <laughs> So first, let's figure out your stance. Now, when I was taught to jerk, I was actually pushed from behind without knowing because I wanted to figure out which foot I was gonna lead with. This is really not that necessary. You can just stand there and try both feet until you find the one that you feel more comfortable with. You know, we will all naturally just gravitate towards using our left foot or our right foot to lead. You know, that's it's really not that deep. Once you figure out which foot you're more comfortable with, just lunge forward and try to find a balanced stance when your weight is like equally distributed between both feet. You know, this is your starting point and it will just take time for you to continue to get comfortable in there. The goal of this whole thing is to be balanced. You know, and we do this by doing three different things. The first one, the shin on the front foot needs to be pretty much vertical. You know, ideally the knee will actually be slightly behind the heel, but this is kind of a hard position to get to and it should be something that comes somewhat natural. As long as you're shooting for that vertical shin, you should avoid most problems that come with like overloading that front foot. The second one is that when you split, you should split slightly outwards. You know, this will give you a wider base and it should be a more stable base. One of the biggest issues when it comes to splitting is what they call tight roping, which means that your feet are essentially like in line with each other, which is extremely, unstable and we want to avoid that. So remember to split slightly outwards. And lastly, if you can, this is not a complete need, but if you can, turn your toes in slightly in this split position. Now for the actual lift, you're gonna stay in a front rack position. 
with the bar completely over your shoulders. It might be a little bit uncomfortable in your throat at first, but that'll get better, I promise. Your arm should be slightly relaxed. You should not be over gripping the bar at this stage. It is important that in the jerk, you do have a full grip on the bar. You know, we've talked about the clean in the past and that it's not completely critical for you to have a full grip on the bar in the clean, but in the jerk, it is recommended that you do. Yes, you can actually move your grip once the bar leaves your shoulders if your mobility is really not there, but I would recommend you work towards being able to have a full grip in the front rack for the jerk. Your elbows don't have to be fully up. It is okay for you to drop them actually. So that might help a little bit if mobility is an issue for you. If you can't even hold the front rack position comfortably, you need to address the mobility restrictions that are stopping you from being able to do so. You know, check any sort of tension that you may have on your lats, on your chest, on your shoulders, work on your thoracic spine flexibility and just work on your mobility. You know, mobility for the overhead position will, should be a video on its own because I can spend probably like 20 minutes talking about it and all the drills that I know. So for the sake of this video, you'll probably be better served just finding some tutorials online on how to like get better mobility for the jerk. Now from this front rack position, we want to brace hard and drop straight down. The jerk is actually a movement that revolves fully around your knees. Your hip should not oscillate or shift backwards, forwards, essentially nowhere. It should drop straight down and it should move straight up. Okay, this will force your knees to move forward and this is completely fine. If this feels odd at first, just record yourself and make sure you're actually dropping straight down. Your feet should be slightly pointed out for this movement. But if you're struggling with this, it might be useful to like accentuate the opening of the feet and push those knees even further out. This first motion is called the dip and the dip in the jerk should be somewhat controlled and somewhat slow. It's still a pretty fast movement, but you need to remain in control. Do not drop so fast that the bar actually becomes disconnected from your shoulders. You should know that there's essentially two styles of jerk. If you're an athlete who revolves mostly around strength, meaning that you probably have like pretty high squat numbers as compared to your lifts, you will more than likely have deeper and longer and also slower dips in the jerk. Meanwhile, if you're a more powerful athlete, like if your squat numbers are maybe closer to your lifts than what we see normally, you will more than likely have a pretty quick jerk, a much shallower jerk. You know, and you will even use some of the oscillation on the barbell to get you through the movement. This is of course not something that you should overthink and you will naturally just gravitate towards one end or the other, okay? Just keep in mind that you will see people having different mechanics in this part of the lift. <laughs> Now the second part of the movement is the push or the ascent. Now, like I said earlier, the dip should be a controlled motion, but when it comes time to push up, this needs to be an abrupt change of directions. Okay, from this moment on, you should be putting as much force as you can into moving upwards. You need to stay braced and keep your torso stiff and very, very hard. Once again, the hips need to move in a straight line. Once you reach full extension, the bar will naturally continue traveling upwards. And it is at this point that you need to activate your upper body. Remember, like I said earlier, during the setup and into the dip and through the push up until final extension, you should not be carrying a whole lot of tension in your arms. Even though your grip is gonna be fully on the bar, it should be somewhat relaxed. But as soon as the bar leaves your shoulders, you need to start pushing upwards. You need to start putting force into the bar. This accomplishes two things. To a much lesser degree, it does put some upwards momentum on the bar, which can slow down its fall and help us just get the bar up higher. But secondly, and most importantly, it pushes us into the proper catch position. Okay, the bar should follow somewhat of a backwards trajectory. You know, some people might be straight up and down, but for most of us, it will be somewhat of a backwards trajectory. If you think about it, when you start, the bar starts on your front plane in the front rack position. By the time you're done with the lift, the bar should be behind your head. It's not only a bad lift if you catch the bar with bent arms, it is also much, much harder to actually catch heavy weight with bent arms. So we want to catch these weights with our arms locked out, you know? So if we continue putting force into the bar, not only will we get into the right position, we will ensure that we are catching this bar with straight arms. This is how lifters can actually achieve very deep catching positions, even in the split jerk, because with heavier weights, you sometimes will simply not be able to get at as high as you ideally would want to on a perfect jerk. 
you know, and the bar will continue falling down. And all you're doing is essentially jamming yourself under this falling weight and then just trying your best to continue putting upwards force into the barbell so you can slow it down and start pushing it back up. This is the magic of the jerk and why punching the bar up can be such a good cue for both the snatch and the jerk. For the recovery, just know that the front foot moves first. That is it. <laughs> no, but seriously, like the front foot needs to move first. The reason is this. Even if you were to have like an equidistant split, meaning that the front foot and the back foot are like the same distance apart from the line of gravity that the barbell creates, you would want to move the front foot first because it's just an easier movement to get yourself under the bar with a stable position. You can try this by yourself. It is much more easier to make that quick jerky little step back in with the front foot, have a full foot on the floor and essentially jam yourself under the bar and start pushing up. Bringing that back foot in first doesn't do much for that. And it gets even worse because you will notice that it will put considerably more pressure on your front foot. And whether you like it or not, the bar is probably gonna move forward, okay? And controlling that bar moving forward is much, much harder. Moving the front foot first allows us to just quickly get ourselves into a better position to start pushing up. And you can do it without moving your body very much. Try moving your back foot in first and you see how awkward it is. And if it ever happens during a competition, if you ever see other weightlifters doing it, like moving the back foot in first, it's probably not a good jerk. Like, that's all there is to it. It's just not a good jerk. And I'm sure you can go online and find people who are the exception to this rule, you know, and they seem very adamant about explaining it in every single video. And you know what? There can be exceptions to the rule. I'm not saying it's impossible, but for the most part, for most people, myself included, and most of the people that I've coached, it will be better to just move the front foot first. And you'll notice that at lighter weights, it's how you normally do it. And it's only when you have issues with the jerk, because it is a tough movement, then you'll get out of positions, so you start moving the back foot in first and you'll get all out of whack, you know? Work towards always moving the front foot first, being stable and being in good positions. Because the sport of weightlifting is simply about positions, nothing else. Lastly, a quick little note on the overhead position. The proper overhead position is not shrugging, okay? We wanna pinch those shoulder blades together just slightly and depress them just slightly. Anatomically speaking, this is a much more stable position and this is what you should aim for during your training and during competition. I often find out that if, I'm, if I ever find myself shrugging, it's usually because I'm just spent. I am very, very tired. And my body is simply not capable of holding that bar and it's just taking every single thing that I have to just keep that bar in place. And yeah, that's the video for this week. As always, hopefully you guys got something out of it. Uh, below are links for coaching and programs that I have. And yeah, if you wanna be coached by me in the Olympic lifts or in strength and conditioning, maybe the off season, or you just wanna improve your habits when it comes to working out, just reach out in the links below and yeah, let's work together. But as always, hope you guys enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. It is important to draw wisdom from many different places. If you take it from only one place, it becomes rigid and stale. Understanding others, the other elements, and the other nations will help you become whole.